Welcome to SFF 180 and night 6 of the 12 days of Halloween. Tonight, the urban legend of the ghostly hitchhiker is transformed into a tale of four spectral sisters, battling a malevolent dark force in order to reclaim their identities and independence. In Pretty Mary's All in a Row, hello everyone, Thomas here, your host as always, thank you for joining me. A ghost story from the ghost's point of view, Pretty Mary's All in a Row, is an admirably complex and ambitious horror novella by Pennsylvania writer Gwendolyn Kiest, inspired by popular folktales and urban legends, and designed as a story of empowerment for the ghostly women who typically feature in these legends. Resurrection Mary, or Re for short, is the famous ghostly hitchhiker, the pretty young thing dressed for a dance that one is said to find wandering lonely country roads. Now, when we meet Re, we get the impression that she both delights in her hauntings and treats it all like a job. Confined to a brief stretch of highway, she waits in the dark for an unsuspecting driver to pull over, only to revel in his terror as she goes all ectoplasmic after getting into his car. But as we soon see, these aren't just afterlife mean girl pranks. Fear is sustenance, not only for Re, but for her sisters, four other famous Marys with whom she shares a lonely, decrepit mansion that she's whisked away to each morning as the sun rises. There is Mistress Mary, quite contrary from the How Does Your Garden Grow nursery rhyme. There's Red, or Bloody Mary, who lives inside a mirror. Mary Mack is the emo girl of the group, laboring away in the basement, building her own coffin. And finally, there's Marie Lud from a Welsh folk tradition, carrying around a horse's skull, because that's just the kind of style icon you are when you're a ghost. Despite her spectral nature, Re does have one living human she doesn't haunt. David is a man who shows up on Re's highway most nights, although the passage of time between each of their meetings can be days or months or even years apart for him. Kist never explains exactly how they know each other, whether they were lovers in Re's lifetime or what, and I actually liked that choice. But Ree is always happy to see him, and each night he always drives her to a remote cemetery for her final moments among the living. Clearly, they each have, in their own way, a deep affection for one another, and it's actually really sweet. Ree is saddened by the way David visibly ages between their meetings, but she isn't entirely happy to learn that his devotion to visiting her has extended to bringing his own little daughter, Abby, along on his night drives. All is not well in the House of the Marys. Only Re and Red have managed to get any good hauntings in. Re from the frequent highway travelers, and Red from a couple of bubbly teenage twin girls who have figured out how to conjure her up because it's awesome. The concentrated fear Re and Red bring back to the mansion each time simply is not enough for all five to feed upon. It's a delightful touch that when the Marys feed, it's an actual dinner table scene. Seriously, their house Feels like every goth party I ever attended in the 90s. <laughs> also, Re has recently been hearing from a disturbing disembodied voice, male and inescapably sinister, a powerful dark presence getting closer to resting control over all the Marys for some nefarious purpose of its own. The eventual conflict involves Re's search to learn anything at all about her identity when she was alive, and about which she recalls almost nothing. This leads to a fascinating conceptual twist upon the very nature of urban legends and folktales, and what sustains them, and how Re and her sisters are essentially called upon to free not only themselves, but generations of hapless young women from a self-perpetuating cycle they never asked to be part of. Pretty Mary's is a story that's confident in its intent and remarkably assured in its execution, offering warmth, love, humor, suspense, all supported by a level of narrative depth that would have been impressive in a novel, let alone a story of under a hundred pages. Gwendolyn Kist is a writer in fine command of her craft who writes with real love for those who lurk just on the other side of the veil. And there you have it. That's all I got for this episode of SFF 180. Remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your friends, and above all, please subscribe. If you haven't done so, that is how SFF 180 grows as a channel. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits in the Winx Army get little perks, like getting to see some of these videos early. I want to thank all of those folks for their added support. I want to thank all of you for being the best viewers in all of BookTube. 
And until I see you Friday night for episode 7 of the 12 Days of Halloween, Spooky Reading.